Hey, what is up, my brothers? Each daily each, I'm back with part six of my personal Rams ebook. We're going to get right into the uh, gun trips TE formation, and this is going to be the uh, wide receiver screen. Uh, this is going to be most likely the uh, last um, installment into this series, guys, so I hope you enjoyed it so far. Uh, this is going to be another uh, modified screen. You've seen this in the last uh, video. We showed one, so I pretty much run a couple of, about, probably about three different variations. So in this one, wide receiver screen, we're going to take X, put him on a streak, motion the running back to the left, put him on a swing left, and I take A, put him on a slant. This is going to be the same thing. We're looking for man coverage off the bat, same as the other modified screen. I don't see the man. I'm going to kick it right out there. Uh, and then uh, blocking is normally pretty good on there. The, you'll notice a lot of guys, when they do user, they like to user linebackers. And typically, I, I notice a lot of guys on the left-hand side. So we're going to hit this play. When you motion it like this and you have the receivers out there, again, this is kind of like that y circle one I mentioned. It starts becoming a little obvious that's what you're running. So you begin to attack either the user or the man coverage. So watch that left line on this one, like that left outside linebacker. Watch where he's going in the, in the middle there. Um, if he doesn't attack the running back, we're going to go for that. And don't let the guys bait you either. Make sure he's going to you know, commit to one or the other. You don't want to be throwing a pick when you hit this A route here. And, and every so often that gets a little uh, crossing in there. Sometimes you mix that. Most of the time it's pretty good, though, and you can, you can uh, clear out and get around with A. But, um, you know, as you see with a lot of the stuff that I run, guys, this is why I highly stress getting uh, wide receivers that block for my offense. Uh, a lot of the stuff I do is going to be it require these guys to hold their blocks and, and allow me to, you know, maybe make one guy miss and whatnot because not everyone's going to hold every block. But uh, that's why I always stress the importance of it. You'll see that in a lot of the plays here. And, and, and just making one guy miss normally gets you a big chunk out of these these plays. That's pretty much what it is. Whether it's the spin or the juke, whatever your move is, just roll with that. And you see blocking uh, holds up really well on, on this one. Uh, um, you know, and there's other things that you can do. If, you know, if you see them keying on it, by all means, you know, take one of those guys and... and and, you know, maybe slam them out to the other side, you know, one of those left-hand guys, or whatever it is you want to do. Um, just, again, this is the only thing about this one is it becomes a little obvious as you start running it. So mix it in. Don't hit it too often. Uh, you know, if guys are blitzing a lot, though, I, I'll burn them with that one until until they basically stop blitzing or they figure out the right way to um, blitz and contain, which some guys are good enough, but most people won't on there. But again, as I said before, these type of plays are basically almost running plays to me. So this is going to be the PA slot corner. I have two ways to run this. On this one you're seeing, I'm taking B, putting him on a streak, basically. Um, and the way I'm going to read this one, and I block the running back on these because I, I need that, uh, I need a quick read just like this because you can't hit that uh, seam pass if, if you run the play action. You can't. So I, I will block this. So again, taking the B in here, putting them on that. So it's going to be a B, Y, X. This is a, back to the old traditional stuff we're doing about the three step reads here. As I see, the B's got the, you know, on the seam, he has the guy on him right there real tight. So over the middle there, we're going to hit the Y. So that's pretty good. Again, in most coverages, that one's going to open up pretty well. Uh, you just get the timing right on it. Again, you know, reading the user and stuff like that and knowing how good he is and what he's going to cover, that's going to come up to you. Uh, you know, I can give you the plays on here, but... Stuff like that is, you know, you can run this against a computer, run this against AI, you know we're going to get. This is all pro stuff. This is how they're going to react in the games. But that is the outside element, is the usering. So um, it really, on a play like this, they're going to either float to the Y or the, you know, sometimes the X. So if uh, you don't hit that seam right off the bat, which I hit right there, really keep an eye where he's going to be at. You know, if he's if he's running the middle, he's typically going to float around that Y guy. So that makes that th can make that throw a little dangerous. Then you hit the underneath route on that. So... Uh, we want to try and keep the guys guessing with a lot of the plays we do. As you, you know, at this point, you know, once you get all the stuff I've given you, you've got enough variations and stuff. You've got different means to um, kind of cover up some of the stuff you're doing. Even though I said we have similar concepts, but we have different ways to run it. Uh, you know, definitely flip these plays. I run them one way, but you know, a lot of these plays you can flip. You'll figure out the ones you know that don't work the other side. Sometimes they don't work as well because some plays you flip, you'll get a tight end running a route instead of a receiver, and it's a little bit slower. It doesn't work. But so here's the other version here. <clears throat> I'm going to take the X. He's going to streak now. And then A, I'm going to drag. So this one turns into, again, we're going to look at the X if you can beat maybe like a cover two. But then the B coming across underneath. Uh, and then if someone's camping underneath him, they're going to intercept it. I'm going to go uh, 
on the bottom there on that drag route to X. But you'll see me hit this one, uh, you know, a decent amount of times in some of the videos here. Uh, that that B route's normally pretty pretty good. Again, you know, you know stuff like purples, the occasional man coverage, depending on just the breaks. You know, you know the game is uh, it's not going to be consistent. Things are going to play out differently. So sometimes that's going to be wide open to man. And sometimes you're going to get picked. So you really got to, uh, you know, run it enough to kind of understand where the coverage is going to be. Uh, you know, where it's safe to throw it or not. See right in there. I know that's a good one, but you know, right off the bat, you may not want to throw that, you know. So, again, just uh, practice enough to get a comfort zone in there. And right there, that's a, you know, it's more of a bullet, but it's an outside lead, almost a 9, 10, 10 o'clock lead. So you can see sometimes when you break past and then that, that outside corner kind of, you know, he never turns and then he just kind of sits. As soon as he sits, as soon as you see that and he, he does it, you've got to throw that pass, though. You don't have a big window on, on those sort of plays because otherwise the safety has enough time to come across and intercept it. But... Um, you know, if you can't, if you want to hit the Y on that, I, I, you can. But the way this sets up, don't force stuff. So go, you know, if you want to hit the middle, you go with the first version. If you want to hit that sideline, which is pretty nice, you know, uh, especially near the end of halves, this is a good play to run when you, you know, when you don't want to burn a timeout. Really nice. So this is the halfback counter. This one is really dependent on the coverage, okay? So the, the play we just ran on the PA slot corner, that is an audible. So you can come out in this, and if you notice you don't have guys outside of the tackle box, like these plays I'm running here, I'm just showing you the ones basically where uh, you, you basically, see right here, you've got nobody sitting outside. You don't have corners sitting out there, and the safety's kind of deep. Sometimes even if there's nobody on the outside, but see the safety back there, there you know, if he comes up to the line, sometimes that'll cause a problem uh, on this counter also. But the guard can pull and pick him up. Uh, that's why you've got to have a really good uh, pulling guard, left guard especially in this offense. I mean, the right guards, they're just not that great yet in this game, I don't really feel, but, um, and I know it's kind of uh, expensive now for the two new guards. I really would like a sit, and I really think that would make my offense really dominant, but I don't know if I want to drop 500K at this point in the game with him, all these other cards coming out, but you got to have a good pulling guard for this. Um, and and they're right there, double juke. Um just in case, for some reason, you don't know this. And obviously, I spin a lot, but if you don't know this, all you're doing, I flick the right analog out. I flick it out to the right, and then I do hold the LT precision trigger, and then I go back in. This On the other side of the field, same thing. Um, you're going to go left towards the sideline, and then precision juke, and then right. you got to do it pretty quick, but that's how you get that, where they kind of fade it, you know, go one side, and then bounce back to the other. Uh, it, it does seem to make a miss a little bit more than just the standard juke. I don't use that stuff a lot. I find that anytime you're dealing with precision buttons, that, I mean, you get a better effect, but I do believe your, your, your fumble rate goes up a lot. So I don't precision spin at all. I never precision spin. I just do the normal spin, in case you're wondering on that. Okay, I'm now going to get into the uh, gun tight offset tight end formation. I do like a lot of, lot of runs out of this, guys. Uh, the dive, the uh, 01 trap, and the halfback counter. You've probably seen those a decent amount in the videos. Right now, I'm going to be looking at the spot corners uh, play here. I'm going to take the X. I'm going to put him on a streak. I'm going to take the B, put him on a drag. Um, this is one of those where the timing could dictate that you put an N on the B, but again, if they blitz, uh, you got to have, you've got to always also have somebody that can, you know, beat that, beat that basically like a hot route. And there it is over the top. That's what I really started wanting to get out of this play. You're not going to get that a lot, but um, I have Steve Smith. You need a fast fast slot guy to really make that work blow him out over the top there um, when you run that play you'll sometimes see that x receiver well if he gets a good um, jump off of, off of that route you'll sometimes see the corners and the safety split if they open up wide and he runs through it that's when i'm going to hit that play normally his speed will overtake that otherwise y is really good as you can see here I'm barely getting past, but that's because I'm using this in practice mode, and these guys don't have anybody worth a crud as far as receivers on New England. But again, I, I, the Brady and the Gronk is why I ran them in here. I just didn't want to change it up to confuse people. Um, there's the underneath stuff. The Y receiver on this one is, is normally pretty nice, but again, this is a play that will take some time to develop. Um, normally, a left pass lead, as you see right there. Sometimes you have to keep it down and in, depending how tight the coverage is right in there. Um, even on some man stuff, sometimes when you see him coming up, when you know he's a out to cut left you can throw that ball and and that'll also sometimes make it again that play right there it, it's got to work out right to where you see the coverage dictate because if you it's, it's kind of like a seam the way that it sets up and coverage so um, normally when I make that play I get a little bit more space in there and I'm hitting that with Steve Smith he's five foot nine 
I normally try and hit him in stride, though. I don't like doing the jump stuff in there because I want to be able to score afterwards, not just be tackled. Um, but, you know, so you've got to at least get the timing down as far as when to throw that ball. So, because if you throw it too late on that play, it, it's not going to work. You cannot throw a late ball to X. Um, you're going to get picked or it's just, not, you know, you've got to hope for you know, a jump ball, but you don't want that. So uh, a lot of times in the videos I've seen, and this is the second, I didn't really listen in the beginning of the season, but here in the last half I have, and that wide receiver has been really good for me, even right there again. Uh, he's normally pretty nice, and, and sometimes I'll even run that one and get out of bounds if I let it develop a little bit longer in case, again, you're short on time. Um, for some reason, I'll tell you what, that play in um, – this practice mode is a pain in the butt. I don't know why. I, I have pretty good success in the real game, but in practice mode, it's it's a pain. And now we're going to get into the spot shake. So last one was spot corner. This is the spot shake. I'm going to take the running back out of the backfield. I will motion him out left. I'm, you know, I'll put him on a flat sometimes. Sometimes I'll swing him left and then motion him. And sometimes I'll just swing him left and leave him there. Uh, the, 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 the idea there is you see how that uh, basically that route runs out there on the Y, he runs out left and then breaks up. What I'm doing, trying to motion him left, B's, RB's not really a target, but I want him to hold that guy who's running underneath. Even if they're running a the sky or something along those lines, I want him to hold, you know, if they do run a uh, defender out there, I want him to hold him so that way I get that break off of the Y when he comes up. Um, normally, you've got to throw that pretty early on with a bullet as soon as he makes the break, though, so you've really got to, you know, see if he uh, beats that coverage or not and gets off the line. Sometimes in man... Like that, he'll he'll blow by the guy, and it's it's a good game. But sometimes, you know, the man coverage will hold on to that. So really watch and see if you get the separation right after that cut. That's when you throw it. You're going to have B coming across afterwards. So, you know, if you don't hit this early, you know, the early Y in here, you should be able to hold on and hit, hit the uh, B coming across. I don't really make use of the running back. You can. He is kind of a read in there, but only if basically nobody – comes out like on a play like that i could probably throw it sometimes i'll hit the y you can probably throw the b but the only issue with that is sometimes if you don't hit it early enough um he, he's gonna catch it and kind of stop and he doesn't get a lot of uh, momentum going so you've kind of got to hit that as he's going out and you can see here that's like a swing so you can run that if you intend to use him more you can start swinging them out there they're both covered so i have to go basically to the b but um just, just decent play not a great play, but it's one that, you know, on occasion I will mix in. So now we're <clears throat> going to be looking again here. We've got the tray open offset. Now, this was probably the first. This was actually the formation that got me into running this, and this is the wide trap. I don't show a lot of runs, but this one's kind of more specific to this. I don't know how many um, playbooks actually have this one. And basically, you are going to be trapping on the outside, depending on the coverage here. So this is one where I basically I just want to look and see. I'm looking at defenders and seeing basically what's out there. This is a lot of the Jamal home runs, a lot of the highlights and stuff. This is the one you'll see. It can be shut down. It's going to be dictated basically on the formations they're running. You will start spotting it up and knowing what will work or not. A lot of times right when you see the formation. So that's how it's dictated to run. You're going to have a guy, if he's outside of the tackle, he's going to kick out. Your guard's going to come up, and you're going to run inside of that block that's the way it's standard they don't always have a guy there who kicks out though so you know like that one right there Gronk comes in he's going to block him in and then sometimes you know again one guy miss and you normally have got a good chunk I mean this guy's not a great running back and these guys block for crap alpha on the outside here so uh, this play is not going to work as well as, as when I run but again you can uh, turn this one in once you get you know past that tackle now look right here basically off the tackle now we have extra men in between our tackle and our tight end do not run the play in this situation i'm going to run it here to show you but this is when i audible out because typically that's what's going to happen anytime you're overloaded between the tackle and the tight end and you've got linebackers or people positioned in there and you don't have the numbers to block it uh, don't run the play but if you do like i say you can turn this one in Try to not hit the speed burst as you, until you get through this. Okay, then boom, you can hit that at that point. But uh, because of the way you're going to have to turn and navigate that one, I, again, I've said that before, I do not like hitting it too early in the play. I know it's hard. I sometimes do it just out of habit, but uh, just know that. And then sometimes, like I say, I bounce this one in. You'll see one guy miss and goes. And you'll see that a lot, uh, you know, like guys like Jamal. You'll see guys slide, one guy sliding off, and next thing I go, it's like boom, 40 yards or a touchdown. So... Out of that one, out of the, uh, you know, again, we're in the uh, gun tray open offset. 
the PA read here was, is going to be an audible you can go to in case you don't like the coverage on that run when you see it. I'll always block the Y. I notice I get sacked a lot when I don't on this play for whatever reason. I just do. Um, and this is a fairly basic play. Is early on in the year. This one worked a lot, but people are you know again this one is a little bit easier to read with a good user. So be you know on top of that. Typically, that's the that's the play I will go to though. That that um, RB receiver is going to be good, you know. And on the outside here, this is going to have a comeback route on the X. You know, th those work very well. I say, like I say, as long as you don't have a guy just straight camped, like a purple camped underneath it. If you can get the timing down on that, you know right when he's about to come back, and you get that nice little bullet, uh, you know, I'll throw. Um, I think I don't know if some people use down leads or not. It's dependent. Um, but this RB one right here is, is basically you versus that middle linebacker. I can throw it over his head. Sometimes, you know, even though you wouldn't think in there, as soon as he breaks through, passes that, I'll throw like an up pass lead, but a bullet because obviously yeah, I can't be floating that. And here you see I motion B left, put him on a streak. You can do that. I don't do it a lot, but that gives you a lot of the stuff that we worked, you know, in some of the other videos. That gives you that streak option first followed by, you know, the, the A and the B. So however you want to read that, uh, at least it gives you another element instead of just having, you know, if you don't want to use those comeback routes. But here's the B right there, and sometimes that exact play, I'll run it like that. Sometimes I'll give it that up pass lead because it's going to give them that momentum going up. Because if you bullet that and you do that up pass lead, it's still gonna it's still gonna be pretty nice. Um, it's not really that dangerous as long as you have that gap there. So that's you know that that's just stuff that you'll get familiar with over time. Uh, you know as you as you run the plays, you'll start understanding where to put those leads at. But they are fairly important right there. That's the up pass lead. It's it's the, it's subtle when you throw it like that because you know you're throwing the bullet. But it, I feel like it's going to help me get those extra like five, six, seven yards right off the bat. You know, easier to make a play. Uh, if a guy's trailing me in man coverage like that, you can't throw that right there. He'll pick that off. So there, I have to throw the you know to the out to the uh, sidelines basically. Okay, now if you're one of the few that are actually been with me, you know, since early on, and you know, the, the, and since I started uh, uploading videos, this was the play we called the Freddie B screen. This is the halfback slip screen. This was the first modified screen I started running. I had, uh, you know, Fred Belitnikov obviously as my slot, and so therefore it just it just became the Freddie B screen. So I took A here and I put him on a slant. I put the RB on a drag. Drop back, and then we would just, you know, try and get as much time out of it as you can so he can get a little bit further across, and then I hit him on this. Um, you've got to navigate the traffic. You're going to have a lot of blockers out there, but you've got to be able to navigate that. And there you go, one spin and go. That was the standard version just to show you because you're going to get extra blocking out there if you run the normal one. So sometimes you want to hit these guys with that normal one. Um, first a couple times and then like I said because I like to see what the user is doing if the user camps out in the middle when you run a normal screen and he doesn't move he's going to eat you up on this you don't want to run it then uh, you don't run this play very often also in, in a sense but if the guy's heavy blitzing you know they're blitzing a lot and you think that it's coming this is a good play to go to like I say if you don't as long as you haven't ran it too often and, and they're going to be seeing it coming uh, it, it, this is very good like I say if the Blitz is coming and your block's set up. I mean, it's very nice. So don't be too eager to cut this up. Watch where your blocks. Try to navigate the hole. Again, do not speed burst through any of this part right here. Get around the corner. Then you can hit it. Like, boom, then you can hit it. But you basically, you know, this one will take a few times to get used to. You can't, you know, if you run it, say, practice mode, you might want to put a blitz on or something because, again, uh, just, to, just to know it's not going to beat everything. This is not like a uh, money play in, in a sense like that. You're going to, here's what I'm showing you. This is the standard sort of thing. If you don't catch the blitz and they have the right coverage, you're just going to get stopped for a two or three yard play, you know. And if that's all you want or two or three yards, you can probably do it as long as the guy doesn't use her that spot and you're worried about an interception. But, again, when they're throwing, you see some blitzes coming like that, um, Sometimes the blocking sets up. Every so often they'll catch it from behind. But I use Steve Smith, like I said before, very high elusive. So that play right there, he might have broken away with the one guy anyway. So, um, you know, again, we said before, these guys don't have good receivers and whatnot. They're slow. They're very slow. I think Amandola was like not 85 speed. So I switched to a different guy here, but they're still not great. But again, blocking sets up. Uh, I'm glad that wasn't a real game because if I had four blockers out there and they still don't hit the guy, I'd be you know kind of upset. But then, hey, that's Madden for you, right? This time, you know, I do get they 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 uh, do make the block just by default because the guy ran that took the angle. But again, that's uh, what we're looking here. You've seen um, this in the past. Turn it up for big play. Again, it's not a you don't want to abuse it. I can say it again. You don't want to abuse it. But again, uh, sprinkle this in once or twice a game. You know, if you see the blitz is coming. So again, we're uh, now Trey open offset. This again, seven to ten. If you're keeping track of the numbers in this, 
Uh, <clears throat> this will be, like I say, the stick and nod. I'm not going to run a lot of the basic stuff here that I do run. Um, I might as well throw it out early here. I do not run a lot of the five receiver sets, so that's why this one's going to be the last one in the series here, more than, um, more than likely. I may come back and update that later. I just don't want to throw plays out that I don't run in the season. You know, I'm not just making up stuff on the fly here. This is stuff that has worked for me, so I don't want to just, uh, you know, make something up here you know, in practice mode and, and give it to you guys, you know, and let you test it out. That's, you know, I don't, I, that's kind of irresponsible on that. I'm trying to give you stuff that I know was tested, proven, and has worked for me. And and on this play already, guys, you see I motioned the A left. And you see right here I got press coverage. So even though this isn't my normal read, when I see that, I'm going to go to the X. I'm going to hit him deep over the top. Boom. Again, that's stuff that, you know, you've got the normal reads, but there's a lot of streaks and a lot of plays I run, guys. So if you see that coverage pressed up, by all means, take it. Otherwise, um, I do take the A. Here you go. Here's a bullet pass to the left-hand lead. That's where that play is normally going to work if you've already driven a cover off. I'm going to take, you know, again, A, motion him left. I like to take the outside B, put him on a slant. He's kind of my number two read in here. And I'll take the RB. I like to put him on a drag. You can leave him on the normal one, but I like to drag. I don't feel, you know, those little zig stuffs really get open well. And on a play like this where you're looking at it as a, you know, a later read, it just takes too long. And there you have it, guys. That's going to wrap this up. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the series. I'm looking forward to hearing some uh, feedback. And I'm going to see you guys in uh, review stuff. I'm going to get back to that. Uh, again, thank you all for checking this out. And uh, see you all later.